Hi friends. I am so excited to talk with you today about sharing your story. And this is something that I end up talking to my clients about and just acquaintances in my life. And so I, I come up against where so many people have already told my clients to share their story, but I want to encourage them to embrace their story. And so I want to do the same thing for you today. And I ask you to embrace your story because um, if I just ask you to share your story, you can just talk about your story online and you might not feel comfortable and I don't want you to do that. But if you embrace your story and only share the parts of it that you want, it will be more authentic. So you have complete permission from me in order to do that. And so I'm gonna help you go through this process today so that you can kind of dive in and think about how much of your story you actually wanna tell. And so um, just a little bit before uh, we dive into the questions, I wanted to tell you why it's important to share your story. And if you already know this, then you can fast forward a little bit. But if not, I just want to encourage you to share your story because it helps you relate to your students. If you think about who you relate to, it's probably because you have something in common with them. And so if you share your story, you're going to attract those students to you mm -hmm. that you have something in common with and that will help them come back to your classes all the time and it will really help you share your authentic brand. So let me dive right into the questions. So these questions are about talking, looking at your story. So question number one is, how were you introduced to yoga? Were you curious? Was it a friend who told you about it? Was it a doctor that recommended it? However you became interested in diving into yoga, I would love to encourage you to think about that process and what that was for you. And then question number two is, when you went to your first yoga class, or maybe it was the first couple, were you surprised by anything or was it what you expected? Because oftentimes I, I talk to people and usually they have an idea of what yoga is and then they go to a class and realize that it's so much more than that. So that is absolutely part of your story. Number three is a big one. So you started practicing yoga, but what made you take the leap and become a yoga teacher? That's a big leap. You have to go through a certification process. It takes a lot of time and money and effort. So what made you make the leap from a student to a teacher? And then number four is one of my favorite questions to ask, and that is, how has yoga healed you? Was it physical? Was it mental? Was it both? Probably so. Um, so just think about that as that definitely shapes your story. So then once you've thought about your story and all of that encompasses um, part of your story, because of course you have a lot of other things that have happened in your life that have helped shape you as well, but that was your yoga story. And so then you think about sharing it. And so here are the questions that I want you to ask when you're thinking about sharing your story. Number one is, do you already have a separate account on Facebook or Instagram that you share yoga pictures from separate from your personal pictures and stories it, and there's no wrong answer to this if you do you probably have a higher line of a boundary in terms of what you want to share with others so that's good to recognize right off the bat if you don't have a separate account that just means you're a little more open to sharing your story with your audience Number two, how often do you actually talk to your students in class about your story? So you, maybe you don't, maybe you go in, you teach your class and you're out because that's kind of the culture of the yoga studio, but maybe there is a time where you do share a little bit of your story during some of the classes. So I want you to reflect on that. Number three is when you share part of your story, do you share a part of it, like I just mentioned, or do you share it all? Are you open in terms of talking about all the details or do you only talk about some of it? So that'll give you a little bit more insight as well. And then number four is the most important question here. If you don't share your story or if you don't share all of your story, I want you to dig deep, look inward and ask yourself, am I not sharing the story because I'm nervous about what others are going to think or am I not sharing it because it's uncomfortable for me and that's a boundary? So once you look inward and identify that, it'll really help you 
figure out where your boundary line is on what you want to share about your story. But no matter what your answer is, I want you to know that it doesn't matter. There's not a right or a wrong. What matters is that it feels right to you because that's going to be the authentic you that you're putting out to your audience. And that's the most important thing you can do. So some, some examples of some boundaries, just a few to give you an idea. Um, I've seen several of my clients or just those online that I know that they may be a mom, but they never show pictures of their children. So that's a boundary that some people have. They don't want to put um, pictures of their children online in that capacity in terms of their yoga brand. Another detail that um, you might not want to share is if you've been through some sort of a trauma, you may say uh, yoga healed me, I had a car accident, or I had some type of disorder, but you don't go into the details as to what exactly happened, and that's okay too. Sharing a little piece of your story, people can still relate with that, and that's totally fine. So no matter what you choose, no matter what your answers were, I just want to encourage you to be authentic with your audience and they will fall in love with you. I have no doubt. Until next time, see you later.